athletes in the world. They are here from seven nations to compete in America's premier international cycling event, the Red Zinger Classic. Aspen, Colorado, 7.23 a.m. Five numbers are required. One on each shoulder, one on each side of the shorts or the jersey, and one mounted on the front of the frame as far forward as possible. All the components on these bicycles are designed for light weight. This particular seat is a leather over a nylon base and then it's got a titanium frame. <laughs> I'm a good mechanic for an American, but in Italy, the mechanics are so slick, they wear silk shirts. They're called tubulars because the uh, tube is sewn completely inside this tire, and then the tire is glued onto the rim. This is a real pain. There's nothing worse than gluing tires on. British Ash team, I can afford this. Listen, we don't get anything off the British team. Nothing. The time is now 7.23 and 18 seconds. Just loosening up and working out the uh, lactic acid in the muscles. It really saves the riders from getting cramped up when they get cold later on. Your complete bicycle uh, ready for a stage race such as the Red Zinger is going to run you anywhere from around $1,000 to $1,200. Over the next nine days, these riders will face one another in eight separate stage events, street races in five Colorado cities, and three grueling road races covering 700 miles in all. Let's give him a big send-off right now. The best riders in the world, right here at the Red Zinger Classic. Neutralizato, io cane! Before this morning is over, they will challenge 12,000-foot Independence Pass, descend the Continental Divide at 60 miles per hour, and pedal 98 agonizing miles to the village of Vail. The race will be won on the road, the Aspen to Vail race or the Morgul Bismarck race where the Boulder Mountain Road Race is where the race is going to be won, and uh, that's going to take some, some good teamwork. A lot of reasons for shaving the legs. One of them is it makes it really easy for the doctors to work on their legs when they uh, take a crash and they've got to be bandaged. Also, uh, they like the way it looks. Guys who really don't have any idea what's ahead try suicide moves. They just have no idea how long it is. The idea is to uh, launch your teammates uh, into an attack and then have the rest of your team sitting near the front and trying to break up the chasing effort. In other words, getting on the front and slowing down and forcing the chasers to go around them and then reaccelerate up to chasing speed. Most mechanics can do a good wheel change in about 10 seconds. That should be good enough for you to regain your position with the field, unless it's during a critical point in the race when most of the riders are going very, very hard and making attacks. Okay, go. And you get a group of between five and 15 people and that just stays together till the end of the race. Except maybe halfway up you lose one or two guys to get tired. But pretty much the rest of the group rides at tempo pace and goes over the top that way and, and to the finish. And any other breaking up would happen towards the end of the race. You might let one or two riders, uh, real good climbers like Colombians maybe, attack, get the mountain creams. There's just no way that one or two, even three riders can hold it from that point all the way even into Leadville because uh, a group can travel so much faster on the descent after independence.
no doubt in my mind that we get them because they're really good climbers, but when they're in the wind by themselves and on the flats, they just don't have the horsepower. We've raced against those guys, and they'll just keep going and going and going until they're away, and then that's it, you know. So you just let them go and catch them later. Take it easy, friend. Colombia, cinco kilometers, cinco, cuatro, cinco. Hey, regolare. Topos, molto periculoso discesa, periculoso. Caceres from Colombia had a minute and 50 second lead at the summit of Independence Pass in a small chasing group was Tom Sane of Colorado, Scott Flanders of Indy USA, George Mount of the USA national team, Mark Pringle of the US national team, Dale Stetna of Indy USA team, Arturo Lopez from Mexico, and Philip Anderson of Australia. downhills where the riders be hitting up towards 60 miles an hour unless something happens that they have a tire failure uh, they should be running in pretty safe uh, territory on the way down In terms of just food for racing, the Italians have just got it hands down over everybody else. It's the pasta and the meat and the pasta and the meat. In England, everything's fried or boiled. Have you ever heard of fried bread? Who would eat fried bread and boiled potatoes three times a day? In an America, you get really good variety. And you, you can pick and choose if you're into organic type food or just burgers and stuff. And, we uh, he should be in this one. Cold okay, shaver, shaver. It's Davis. Max, Max. Okay, here, give me Max. Stop. Keep the back, Mike. Anybody who's who's actively aware of their body can just tell that when you eat just general good food, you just run much more efficiently. But certainly, uh, I always say, if uh, you feel like going and eating a big piece of cheesecake, go eat it, because you're going to go a lot faster, because it makes you feel better. The two Colombians, Tom Pran from our U.S. national team, and Bob Cook, broke away from the field on Tennessee Pass, getting about two minutes on the main field. Hopefully, they were going to stay away to the finish. Just like a car at Indianapolis, a rider can also save energy by sitting in behind the other riders. The riders will take turns drafting off of each other, the front rider breaking the wind for maybe 15 seconds and then rotating to the rear to rest. And they'll keep doing that all the way until maybe two or five hundred meters before the line and then from there it's every man for himself in a sprint.
Battle Mountain, the Colombians were very surprised when Bob Cook, a Colorado rider, took the initiative to make an attack on the hill. The Colombians are just not used to that, being probably the best climbers in the world. The Aspen to Vail 98-mile road race. Tomorrow, right here in Vail, beginning at 11 a.m., going to be the men's and women's misannounced. Well, the Colombian is a more experienced rider, and I have a feeling that he saved a little something for the finish. I reached down and to my legs, and they didn't quite have it left in them. So that was that. I just jumped as hard as I could, and the, the power just wasn't there. One stage is ended, but there are seven more to come. Today's winner, Casas, will eventually finish fourth overall. In third place from Basel, Switzerland, number 40. To a few will come the victor's kiss. To others, only pain. But victory and anguish are both soon forgotten in the excitement of tomorrow's race. After nine days and 700 miles, one rider will stand alone on the winner's podium with the lowest cumulative time for all stages. George Mount, USA, the top American rider in modern Olympic history. This uh, spectator is worth one glass of water, and Tom comes up to him and he goes, Water, oh, please, water! <laughs> what happened? He thought he was dying! <laughs> but he managed to live another day. <laughs> <laughs>